Check it out. What up, everybody? Welcome to the RCX show, the number one first episode. And uh, first thing we're going to do today is uh, talk about the uh, show recap. The Murphy Stones, me and that's my partner, Roby Stones, we did a show at the Rail Club um, opening for Second Chance, and it was dope as fuck. Like, uh, um, one of our best performances, I think we busted out the steer, as some of you guys saw on uh, Facebook and stuff like that. We busted out the steer, and it was pretty fucking rad. Um, we got that going. Great show. Sold a bunch of merch um, and sold out tickets. So shout out to all you motherfuckers that bought tickets from me. Thank you so much. And uh, next time someone's coming through that you want to see, you know who to hit up. All right, because it's a guarantee. But uh, it was a great ass, uh, great ass show. Met some dope ass people. A lot of kids were rocking my shit, rocking my stickers, rocking my hats and shit like that. And I got to give a quick shout out to thank you to the Rail Club for hosting it, of course. Thank you to uh, Chris Pallone and uh, Stand For Something. I think that's who. Stand For Something for uh, booking the show and forgive me if I'm fucking with the name. Um, You know how it is. Um, And of course, my partner Roby for rocking the stage with me. Murphy Stone's killing it. Um, DJ Rudy Red for coming in uh, and being on the ones and twos for us. That was dope as fuck. And um, of course, Anthony Ward and Sergio San Pedro for getting up on stage and fucking rocking out with us as always. Thank you guys so much. And to everyone that bought tickets once again and merchandise, thank you guys so much for making that shit fucking pop. It was fantastic. Great ass show. Mm. Even met Second Chance. Cool ass guy, so... But uh, moving on, um, let's see here. So, uh, you got to pardon me here. I'm reading the notes. Um, and that that reminds me, like I said, that show's at the Rail Club. That shit was dope as fuck. And, and you know, we're all happy to have the Rail Club back. Um, lots of you, if you don't know what the Rail Club is, man, it's a dope-ass venue that features metal acts, hip-hop acts, you know, country acts, pretty much anything you can imagine. They put on great-ass shows. And um, right now they're actually doing a special. Uh, they just came back, man. Um I was lucky to be a part of the Welcome Back show. It was sick as fuck, but, uh, you know, they're doing a, uh, a special right now for all the, uh, uh, anyone that wants to be a member. They have a little membership deal right now, so it's like 30 bucks um, a person, 50 bucks for a couple, or um, 200 bucks for an individual year membership, so and that'll get you into some free shows, that'll get you into, um, you know, that'll get you some discounted ticket rates, that'll get you some discounted drink prices, um, some merchandise and all that shit. It's really fucking sweet. They even did a commercial about it. It's really dope. Uh, fucking shout out to the Red Club staff for killing that shit. Chris Bullen and all them boys, y'all, y'all killed that shit. But uh, anyway, so just a little shout out to them once again. Thank you for fucking being my fucking, my, being one of my two favorite clubs, I should say, because like mad, mad love to fucking Tom Katz, which is right across the street, of course. Y'all have only shown me mad love ever since I came out here. Fucking, but anyway, so. Moving on, we're going to talk about this. So what this is, the RCX show. That's what the fucking intro said. So what we're doing, I wanted to do this show for a minute now. It was actually a fucking, uh, one of the resolutions on my uh, little yearly, yearly, uh, you know, you know, fucking first of the year comes around. And you're like, hey, fucking I'm doing that. Well, this is one of those things. So um, I want to do it for a while now. And uh, the idea behind it, man, I'm, I'm just going to start out doing these first couple shows. Just just me, you know what I mean? Kind of introducing myself to... I mean, I know I'm, I'm sure a lot of y'all know me, but you don't know me like as far as like the history of how long I've been doing the music shit. And I just kind of want to introduce that a little bit. Just kind of give you a little background. See where I'm at now versus where I've been. You know what I mean? Because like we all have stories. And, and so I want to start out just a couple episodes. Just getting a feel for this. Because once again, this is my first one. So, you know, I might fuck shit up and talk a little longer than, than is needed. Or I might fuck up the editing shit. So if any of that happens, just pardon me, man. And just know this this is a journey. We're going to get to some big ass places. But, um, but yeah, so I'm going to start out doing just a couple episodes where it's just me talking about my past and shit like that. Um... And uh, hopefully then we'll work into um, maybe a co-host. I've been talking to a, a dope ass um, motherfucking dude named Mr. Hicks. He's uh, very interested in getting in. Shout out Mammoth Reputation. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it goes from there. I'll get in guests, of course, because I want people to come in and talk about their journey and their musical life or whatever their you know whatever their passion is, whatever they're trying to do. Just bring them through and have them tell their their rock star stories because. I have some great ones and I love hearing them. They made me laugh. They made me cry. You know, it's all good. And that's what we're here to do. All right. Laugh, cry together and grow. <laughs> but anyway, let me get a sip of this 40 real quick. Anyway, so that's kind of the idea, rough idea of the show. So please forgive me as I work through the adventure of being an amateur at this shit. 
All right. So, and pardon also any background noise or anything like that. That's the disaster I live in. Well, so uh, just to kind of give you guys a little something to look forward to, a couple music projects I'm working on right now. So, I'm very excited about this one. I'm doing them. My my whole idea was. Uh, Actually, this year was to just see how big, how far I could go with all this music. See how 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 far I could expand. And I've uh, I've done some dope ass shit. I'll say that like this year, like it's shot from this time last year to this time this year. I've done some fucking dope ass shit. And not just me. I mean, me with my partner Roby. Like it's been a fucking adventure, bro. We've been to New Orleans. We've been to uh, fucking where else we've been? Oh, we've been all over the place. But like, oh, we've been to New Orleans. We've been to um. Freaking, I don't even remember. Just shit, so many fucking places, bro. And like, we played to some big ass fucking crowds, bigger crowds I've, than I've ever played to. So like, we've definitely accomplished some shit, but like future shit. So, um, currently I'm working on an EP, um, that hopefully will be released at the beginning of next year. That's the goal, um, for my for that for that EP to be to drop. Like, I'm like almost done with the um, writing and like three songs away from being done with the recording so as soon as i finish this last song man we're laying that shit down and then murphy stones we're recording new songs every day so all night every night which is a song that you bitches are gonna fucking love but we're gonna talk about that shortly we're gonna hear that so anyway moving on along with that i'm also gonna be dropping a couple uh just like random singles and they're just like more of like a mixtape variety but i'm gonna be releasing them like one week at a time maybe some covers and stuff like that just to you know get some people rocking with me and whatnot make sure you guys don't forget about how awesome of a musician i am i mean i am rcx dude and all i do is write hits and shit but you know what hey i need to keep y'all motherfuckers engaged and keep y'all rocking with me because all i do is write hits so let me practice that shit but the real goal is coming with the eps and i'm trying to do like three next year three eps uh, we'll see how that goes, but um, anyway, yeah, that's musical projects, and of course, fucking, um, hopefully this will drop before then. But uh, uh, on the um, October sixth, I think it is uh, Sunday, we are going to be uh, me and Murphy Stones, me and Roby Stones. We're going to be opening for Paul Wall and Slab King, dude. It's going to be dope as hell. I can't remember the place it's going to be at, but I will uh, leave that shit in the uh, comment section. It's going to be dope as fuck. So all that info, and you can buy your ticket online if you want to go. So hey, come on out, rock with us, Murphy Stones. We're going to kill it again, and you're going to be hearing some new songs. That All Night Air Night song that I mentioned earlier, you're going to hear that at that show. So come on out. It's going to be a dope-ass time. But anyway, all you motherfucking outlaws rocking with me. We are going to talk about, like I said, this is just kind of a, these first couple shows are just me trying to introduce myself and after a uh, after a couple shows i'm gonna bring in some uh, some dope ass artists and and some people to talk about like dope ass music shit that's that's the whole point of this just having a good time talking about some shit i'm interested in and uh telling some funny stories bro so like um uh i just wanted to give you all a little intro on me and let me get a little sip real quick this is your uh your little break <sighs> a little sip time might play a song here all right no song that shit is unedited just so you guys know just gonna like basically all I did to edit was I fucking took the beginning of this video and fucking pasted it to the beginning of the audio and bam that's how we start talk about my musical beginnings well like check it out all right so man like I really started in this music shit just like or at least with the love for it listening to uh you know the radio with my my uh, mom and dad when we were rolling around in the car Blah. But like listening, like that's the first time I heard Limp Biscuit, Nookie. First time I heard the Red Hot Chili Peppers. First time I heard ACDC. It was it was fuck just rolling around with them. But that's where I I really got my start in listening to music, dude. And it was uh, some of the best times of my my early life. I remember rolling around with my dad, getting some YooHoo, and uh, listening to ACDC Back in Black. That's that's the fucking heaven for me right there. So, um, and like even like. So, elementary school, and I said this was, I mean, I might chop out the the fucking dead spaces here, I don't know, but anyway, back to it. Mm. So, in uh, in elementary school, my dad was a, a military dad, he was a, uh, he's dope as fuck, man, I love that guy, but like, you know, he'd be deployed and shit like that, go out of town, so he'd go out of town, you know, deployed, uh, deployed out of the country, you know, fighting, fighting all kinds of, uh, you know, all kinds of combat zones and shit. 
And so, uh, I would, uh, you know, like, be looking for, uh, fucking fun shit to do, fucking raid his record collection, you know what I mean? And he had, uh, fucking, you know, all kinds of dope ass shit. And when I say record collection, I mean, like, CD collection, bro. And, like, I was, uh, you know, first started out, uh, I think the first three albums I got were Californication and Blood Sugar Sex Magic by the Red Hot Chili Peppers and then uh, Nevermind by Nirvana. Like, so no, no hip-hop in there. And I was just fucking rocking out to that shit on the bus to school. And, like, we lived in New York, dude, so, like, upstate New York, not even the city, so. It was, like, a 30-minute to an hour bus ride just to get to school. Damn, man. So, like, you had some time to discover some fucking music. That's all I gotta say about that. Some time to discover some fucking But, uh... Yeah, so that's what, that's what, uh, that's what I did, discover some fucking music, it was a good-ass time, and, like, you know, never mind, that was a fucking great album, I had a great time listening to it, and, uh, like, from there, dude, like, I think at that point, I really decided I wanted to be a songwriter, I don't know what it was, like, it's just like, damn, these dudes are really saying some shit that interests me, and granted, like, I'm listening to, like, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, which is, like, a super fucking sexual fucking album at like fucking 11 or 12 whatever right like being in love with girls but being like damn I wanna fuck these girls like the two members is talking about like freak shit you'll know what I'm talking about if you listen to that album that's all I gotta say about it so I was like damn alright so what I did like first round of me trying to write lyrics I just fucking copied word for word what the Red Hot Chili Peppers were saying just like ah write these lyrics and then I like show them to the girls and they'd be like oh my god what the fuck is wrong with you fucking perv like just cause I was just copying like I didn't even understand half the shit they were saying I was just like word for word copying them and shit like that <laughs> so I don't know if that's how other motherfuckers started out but that's how I did but anyway like that was middle school just like that this is oh man I can tell you some stories about that middle school like um we uh oh fuck we used to like look at porn back in the day dude shit look at a porn back in the day we we like go to the library and there's like that fucking little section of computers and like motherfuckers would sit on the outskirts in the section of the computers and be like googling fucking porn and shit like that like titty and it was always like really shitty distorted motherfucking pictures it was hilarious and then like they used to like try to block we used to like find a way around those blocks you know so we could look at like fucking naked chicks in school fucking hilarious but uh that's when I started writing. That was also when I was introduced to like musical classes in school, which is fucking hella dope, dude. Like, we had regular music, which was like, um, you know, you learn how to play guitar and dulcimer. Actually, it was dulcimer. We learned how to play and like, um, oh, the other thing was uh, fucking uh, electronic music, which was where we like fucking play the keyboard. And like, at first, like the keyboard was fucking gay, but I do remember like, like he taught us like about fucking uh, cakewalk and shit like that and we had to like make like instrumentals on cakewalk shit was fucking dope like now that I think back like if I'd have known all the shit that I could have, have, have accomplished man I would have been fucking fucking with cakewalk at that age and like making beats and shit like that like I even had a keyboard my grandparents got me a fucking and I was like damn I didn't even think to do fucking make beats with it but hey, fuck it. It's a learning experience, dude. Like, so, uh, yeah. Man, just knocking off fucking run out of chili pepper songs is what I was doing back in the middle school. Uh, I got to high school, and actually, we moved to Texas, and I got to high school. Uh, I was like, fuck, I, I really want to keep doing me, dude. I was like asking for an electric guitar like every fucking year for Christmas, dude. It was crazy. So, but eventually, I got one. And I was uh, 15 years old when I got this. Uh, electric guitar that's fucking sick dude it was uh from my aunt actually got it for me and uh yeah it was just like a shitty little walmart one like 150 dollars like you know what i mean like nothing like you'd be proud of to rock now but back in the day it was the tents i was like fuck yeah i'm gonna learn everything i started learning metallica songs you know it was uh it was fucking dope man but uh See, that's when I started writing songs at first and like I I cared so much about writing songs like I wouldn't even like take any time to like learn fucking how to play the actual instrument I'd just be like alright here these are barcodes like I can fucking make a song bam done let's do this like 
that that's been my problem with instruments all along just like music in general is like i'm so excited to write a new song i fucking don't give a fuck about learning how to actually play the instrument learning how to do the deed you know what i mean i'm just like trying to write some shit i don't know maybe that's my excitement about it i don't know but fuck it let's do this this is power right here let's make it happen i don't know but so uh you know, anyway, I'm in, uh, I'm in high school, and, like, I gotta, I gotta, I know somewhere I got a tape recorder of all the fucking high school songs that I wrote, and it was, like, me and my cousin, um, and he played, he had a bass, because, like, I got a, I got a guitar, and he got a bass, and he was like, all right, fuck, let's, let's, uh, make a little band, so we, like, it was me and him, and then we had a keyboard that played the beat, like, we'd be up in my, uh, we'd be up in my fucking garage, and, uh, you know, have, have the fucking, the guitar amp, the bass amp, and an amp attached to the keyboard, all aimed at a fucking tape recorder, and just play, or record rather, and then just fucking play, da 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 da, do our thing, right? And then, and then we take that, you know, the instrumental if it was dope enough, and we take that shit and we would put it in a in a fucking stereo, and we would uh, press play and just fucking scream or yell or sing, but didn't hear us when we sang, so it was pretty much just screaming vocals over uh you know a fucking tape and uh, it turned out pretty fucking sick like if i can i'll fucking just say fuck it and i'll put that shit on uh on spotify and all that just so you guys can fucking rock with it and, and see where i came from just fuck it i don't give a fuck man like most people be embarrassed about their original shit but like i'm proud of it only because like hey i worked really hard on it at the time and also like look how far i've come so like it was like my best effort at that time that's all music's ever been for me. My best effort at that time. And make some dope ass shit. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've changed my style up a lot since then. You know what I mean? I've, I've been a, a fucking punk rocker. I've been a fucking metalhead. I played alternative rock. I've been in a Christian band. And I, of course, I've been a rapper and an EDM producer and all that shit. So, like, I don't know, dude. I'm just trying to um, find the fucking avenue that works best for me. But. Yeah, so at that time, man, we were rocking some fucking punk rock, trying to be a hardcore band, but unable to because of our shitty technology. I mean, we didn't have a big budget, so we would just basically press up, press up a couple tapes and pass them out, and be like, and hopefully the motherfuckers had tape players. <laughs> so bad. Eventually, I discovered um, that I could uh, transfer shit off the tape player onto the fucking computer and then burn it to CDs. And like, okay, you guys are gonna laugh at that shit because you guys are gonna think like, damn, motherfucker is retarded. Like, how the fuck did you not figure it out? Bro, that was a long time ago. That was like fucking 15 years ago. It was fucking difficult, let me just say. So, it was not an easy task, but so I'd eventually burn them on the CDs and then check this shit out. When I was 18 years old, I didn't get a fucking car because I got in a horrible car accident when I was younger and I got all fucked up. I couldn't drive. So, like, that's a story for another day. But, um, I, uh, I got a computer and I got another guitar. <clears throat> Excuse me. From my, uh, mom and dad, it was an acoustic guitar. So what I did was, uh, you know, we, uh, we wrote a bunch of songs that were terrible, don't get me wrong, but we wrote a bunch of songs and we uh, recorded them all on the tape player and then, you know, did the vocals on the tape player overdubbing them. And then I fucking took that shit over to the new computer I got for my birthday, and we fucking put that shit on the CD, and it had a light scribe fucking uh, disc drive. So that's like where you can get a CD, like for you young motherfuckers, you get a CD, you flip it upside down in the uh, CD tray on the computer, which computers don't even have anymore. So like that's how fucking crazy long time ago it was. But like, and then the uh, the fucking. Uh, Display would burn a fucking label into the CD disc. It was fucking dope ass shit at the time. You know what I mean? Like you could basically like make your own professional CDs out of your own fucking uh, deal. But they fucking killed that shit. Like they were like, nah, nah. And I don't know, man. I mean, it was pretty dope, but it was limited to like it would have been dope if they continued working with that technology. And then like on the market, they had like an actual good quality fucking CD fucking label presser but hey whatever it is what it is so um but anyway yeah so we got that i mean and i started just burning up cds and passing them out dude and just like i made like two to three to damn a, a couple of albums like i just passed them out to um people i knew in school and it was all terrible don't get me wrong it was fucking garbage but hey fuck it i was passing shit out at least so 
now. None of them motherfuckers probably have that shit. And if they do, I'll be like, damn, I'll buy that off you. It was, it was fucking rad, but yeah, put some work in. But yeah, that's a, just a little bit of a background on me. And I uh, wanted to share that. And I uh, hope y'all enjoy the story. There's more to come. Um, and thanks for tuning in to the fucking RCX show. Uh, first episode, we're going to have uh, more coming up very shortly. Uh, thank you for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Once again, don't forget to uh, hit up the uh, railclublive.com. Um, also, don't forget that uh, we are hitting um, the motherfucking stage with Paul Wall on Sunday, October 6th. In Plano, Texas, me that's Murphy Stallings. We're hitting the stage and rocking with Paul Wall. Come out, rock out with us. It's gonna be a fantastic time. Anyway, uh, thank you guys and peace out. <laughs>